Yeah. Well, this one is about a quarter of an inch, so once I roll it on, it will be thinner. But I don't want to be too thin because this is about one eighth. I don't want my pieces to be like one eighth of an inch. So I will increase, okay, increase the, the high level. Are you doing the demo already, Shane? Uh, if you want to learn how to use the slab roller or how to roll the right thickness, mm -hmm. here's the demo. Okay, <laughs> everything I need. <laughs> Yeah, if you repeat without change that dial here, you will, it will be too thin. And also, I don't want my texture to be too deep, so I kind of raise it up. Okay. So, Where is it back? Where is it back? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Will I add that? So this time it'll be like a little bit. That will be, it's, it's already thinner. Uh, not too thin. Not too thin, yeah. So it's this kind of thickness. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you think it's a little bit too thick, there's another trick. You stretch. Okay, you stretch down the. You can stretch your pieces to make it thinner. Okay, if you think it's slightly different. That's how you stretch. That's how you stretch. You pull from one side. Oh. Okay. So this stretch. is just this direction. If you if you want. If you want to stretch the wider, you pull this direction. Yeah, that's how you stretch your pieces. Okay. So that's that. Sure, I wrote it on, and then let's move it to. Uh, can you pass me the uh, phone? Do you need a, the plate? Uh, no. So I'm going to transfer it onto the table and do my demonstration here. And also, I want up to keep my uh, slab straight, hopefully. So I will do the compression. Okay. Oh, okay. Just like we did the uh, mm -hmm. our first project, mm -hmm. the uh, sushi plate. Mm -hmm. Keeps it flat. Keep it flat, yeah. Because the uh, clay has memory. So uh, when you uh, roll it from the pins, you kind of stretch it and clay kind of uh, remember that. So during the uh, drying process and the firing process, sometimes it just reflect the stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't uh, take care of it, the very flat piece might work. Uh, usually the flat piece is very hard to keep them straight. So that's why uh, I, we um, invent this method to keep the, the mm -hmm. uh, slab very flat. Um, the sofa, so good I think your sushi clay will be yeah. the same way I just showed you. They keep very straight, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just I'm just shooting. Have you, uh, nobody want to stay there in the. Yeah, no. No? no. One time I saw my. You saw yourself. <laughs> you, know, you don't like yourself in the. You just see your hands, or you know, not your face. <laughs> not your face. Okay. Go and wave. But well, you can, you can. Uh, uh, can I know, zoom uh, in on you? What? Do I zoom in on you? Uh, no, uh, I will do the post reproduction, so I will roll it up, so I will focus it, but I want to take the most out of it, and then any spot that I want to focus, I when I do the uh, video editing, I roll it up so people can see it closer. All right. <laughs> so I am just moving that here. Uh, you will know how to do that. This is our class secret. Don't tell anybody <laughs> how to keep your slab flat. Right? Compress it. So you distribute all the stress to 
that's the flat surface. Okay. And if you are not strong enough, put it on the floor and jump on it. Okay, jump on it. Use the body weight to do that. Okay. Right? And the reason I put the newspaper is that I don't want the clay to stick on a compressing ball because that is not porous. Okay. That's the reason I put a piece of paper there. Alright, and uh, today's project is this guy. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a butter dish. A butter dish. So you put your butter here okay, and cut it. Serving that in a nice presentation okay so you need to make the dish itself and um, this is very easy the way I show you how to make the sushi plate right so we are going to cut a portion for the dish and then this part here is the cover and the cover so I will have a piece of a dome or the curb and then on both ends we have two pieces so here is the uh, template for that so this, you bend it, and then you attach that on both ends, so you get your part of this, and then you add your handle later. So that's very straightforward. And um, for the size of uh, this this dish, you need to uh, have a compression bowl that is about half a inch. Okay? A little bit uh, more than half a inch on the border, so when you compress on the foam, you get this. You get this. That is how you design your. And if you want to make it a wider, bigger, or whatever, flatter, just use that's the same guy. Okay. All right. So now, now this is compressed, and I need to transfer it. On to here so I could work on it. And here is the uh, template for that. So I need to have one here and two here and then the base. Right, so let's do this, let's do that, let's do that, let's do that. Okay, so we got enough, right? Luckily. Okay. All right, so now for this part here, use the most of it. This is just for the template for the dish, so you don't need to stick it on. Right, get rid of it. So let's take care of the, this part here first. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, someone uh, give me a piece of uh, plastic bag. Right, so I am going to uh, just transfer this. Okay. All right, thanks. So that is for the base and for the compression. I'm going to use this pole to compress it. And use the plastic bag so I will be able to see where is the center. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You want to be a center, just eyeball it. I don't have anything to gauge. Okay, that's good. I guess you could measure. You could measure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is a dish, very easy. Remember how we transfer it, right? Basically, you don't want to touch your slab. The minimum touch, the better. So that's it. Okay, and then now if you want it, you can sign your name or you can sign it later. Flip it. And pick up your compressing bowl. 
throw out your plastic bag. Okay. So that is very easy to make the dish. And uh, if you wanna be, uh, you can bend it, right? slightly adjust it. Bend the edge a little bit. Okay, let this sit aside and then we're going to do the... Uh, it's bigger than yours, right? It's exactly the size, but really? clay do shrink oh, 12%. So mm -hmm. you can compare it. Wow, she right? Yeah. So that is exactly the size when I make it. But mm -hmm. after, after dry, the water vapor out. After the bisque, yeah. it shrink a little bit. And at the glaze fire, the total shrink is around um, 12%. 12%. So when we design things, we have to consider. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. By volume. By volume. By volume, yeah. Three, three, uh, yeah. three directions, three dimensions. So if you want about the template, so you can trace, you can get it. So you want to cut two of them. And this is for the dome, right? For the dome. And the side. And this is for the tray, okay? So that's it here. Feel free to, I, will, I have to set the work, okay? Right, and now, let's do this part here. Um, you want your uh, template to stick onto the clay, right? So, again, do our method of Adding water to the surface. So people ask me, where did you get this kind of a top paper? They watch my YouTube video. Where do you get it? It's print from our texture here on the clay. It, the, the texture is not printed on here. I re reuse my top paper. That's why there's a, a design there. See uh, which side is better. This part has more flowers, so I will use this part here. Okay, and right, rolling pin to stick your tar paper onto your slab. And you don't want to compress too hard, otherwise you might lose the texture. You already roll in. So remember, if you're not using the clay, put it in your bag. Oh, sometimes I, I this is the way I I do it to reuse the clay. Before you put it in the bag, you dip the whole thing in the water and put it in the bag. So the next week when you come, you just wipe it. You will be ready. That's what I did on my piece, on my clay here. What about your hand? Don't you need some for your hand? Handle is it's add on later, so you don't need to do it right now. Yeah. But if you look, make your handle out of a slab, you could do that. But usually, uh, I did a demo on I did a demo on how to make your handle right. You can not quite sticking very well here. So Today is going to be our last demonstration for this session. Mm -hmm. And next week we don't have a class. Oh. The week after is our final class. And uh, usually I don't do any demo on my final class. So you just finish up with your, everything you done it in this class. And actually you want to glaze sooner than later. Just every time on the very last class people are busy glazing and uh, the uh, kiln technician is going to be very busy to try to fire up all your work so 
That's why we did our demonstration on the fifth week, so that people know how to please. That is that, in both sides of it, and uh, remember, you don't want to get the wrong size, okay? So make sure before you go, right? So this will be a dome like that. If you do the other way, it's not going to be right, okay? So that is the size the dome is curving in this direction. Right? Yeah. Okay. So you do that. Um, right, so you already have the foam there. And then, actually, I kind of a little bit uh, go too soon. Actually, you want to cut 45 degrees right before you do that. So I'm going to cut 45 degrees on. Uh, So when you attach two parts of a clay together, what did I tell you? Score slip pressure. pressure. Yes. So this two sparks meter serve to function already, right? You score it, and then you have the slip. All right. So that. Of a paper underneath so that clay doesn't stick, right? And here, All right? So that's the joint on the you don't want to uh, uh, open it up yet until it firm up a little bit, okay? So it just a little bit like that. And once it's getting a little bit uh, stronger, you then can um, add a coil to make them, uh, because you see that the uh, the top paper has some kind of force there, so they tend to want to open up. So you wanna make sure that you want to hold it there, hold it there, right? Hold it in position, and then uh, once they firm up, you could uh, do a better job on the attachment. Okay. So for now, just let it sit here. You can use a piece of a clay to hold it in position, like the, the joint. Here, right? You can hold it there, hold it there. For I would say maybe like 30 minutes 
and then I we come back here and do a better job on putting the pressure together. Now the clay is still a little bit wet, so it's very hard to do anything to it. So let it firm up a little bit. Okay, and then you can you can adjust it later. Okay, so that's it for now. And uh, 30 minutes later, I will call you back and then. <laughs> the handle, uh, the handle is very easy. That the way I show you, right? It's just a roll of coil, and then. I just want to see that the, the two that there's um, there's a uh, sticking out in the middle. I like that thing. What sticking out in the middle? Yeah. So it's a uh, here. So well, how you make that? That's that's what I did, right? So you just use that one too. You just roll it. Right, and then uh, you you use uh, some flat surface. I don't know if you will remember or not. We forgot. You forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen it multiple times. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That way you can roll a better, and then you just compress it, yeah. right? Yeah. And then what do you do? You rolling use a rolling uh, slash small slot roller. You use the small roller and you roll one side and you roll the other side, right? So you gotta reach it in the center, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's how I did it on my handles. Right? Yeah. Um, that's it, right? Mm. And should we put it in a curved thing like this to take shape? While no, you don't. don't. Yeah, you don't. Know, yeah. It, it's free form, and usually you don't attach the handle on the very firm side. Yeah, it, it, it still, the, the handle is still soft, so you can adjust it. Like, see, right? If I want to make the handle when it's still wet. Adjustable, like here. I'm making the handle here, right? And the handle here. Right. So when it's soft, you can adjust it. When it's too firm, it's non-adjustable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you want to still flexible enough, but still firm enough for you to handle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is also need to wait for thirty minutes before you attach to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You usually I wait uh, maybe. Uh, 30, 45, or even one hour to attach back. Okay? So I will go call you up here and then finish up that. You should make the handle and let it sit, Shin? Uh-huh, yeah, you, you make the handle, you let it sit. Okay, it's not going to be too hot to attach. Well, the hotness, you can control it by put it inside a uh, plastic bag or not. You use a plastic bag to keep the moisture. Will you use plastic bag? Mm -hmm. This one? No, I still want it to be dry, so oh, I wouldn't okay. uh, use a plastic bag. So, so you want them to both dry? What yeah, usually you want to, when you attach two parts together, the same dryness is the key. Oh. It's very important to oh, understand okay. dryness, okay? And then, and then we use the water to join them, right? Cool. Water and pressure. Okay.
paper because I want to dry a little bit faster and then um, I try to uh, kind of push it so it attacks better and what I did was using a paper towel to kind of a pinch pinch the corner I pinch the corner so that corner it's sealed okay? it's sealed now and also I kind of put it sideways because when you're working on it, your, your edge is not very straight, so I put it sideways, so use it against the flat surface and kind of push it, so it's more straight, okay? And also here too, I push against it, so you will have a straight edge, okay? That's what I did, right? Okay, and now the inside is still, uh, you can still slightly see a gap there, so you want to use a uh, coil, little mm. coil to patch it. So you patch the corner, and uh, you can brush a little bit of water through the corner to wet it, rehydrate it, and then you want to uh, roll a tiny coil, tiny little coils. Uh, use the softer clay is easier. They don't use your recycled clay. Softer is easier. Okay. And then you put it there. And use a piece of a stick to push that against it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, right? Mm. Push that against the corner and push it. The key is get a little bit of water so your coil is sticking better. And even if your coil is not long enough, that's okay. You can put another section there. You don't there. have to score that, um, Shen? Uh, for the tiny one, you don't have to. Just the key is adding water. Okay. But if you want to score it, you can also score it. But it's very hard to score the corner. So that's why I didn't do it. Well, use, use a brush, okay, you brush and you brush it over there, in the corner, okay? And just patch it. Right, so that's how I join that corner with the coil. And uh, you don't need to do it right away until you seal the other side of it. and water it's for re reinforce the joint Slip, score, slip, uh, pressure. Um, for the tiny one, all you want to do is water and uh, pressure so that your coil is fitting to the corner. And use a little bit of a, of a round corner of the wooden stick, it's helping to uh, replace your fingertip easier to reach there, right? Right, so that's how you reinforce it. Um, later on, I'll come back here and then smooth it better. Okay. Now it's just roughly. I want to sh show you the uh, handle attachment. Um, earlier, I Prepare the handle here, and it's getting dry. 
faster than the body, so I cover it with the plastic bag. Right, so that's, you just find the right uh, size of it. Um, you wanna wait till this, you see that? The handle is still movable, right? And that's the right stage to attach it. You cut it round? Uh, you didn't cut it round, but uh, yeah, you could uh, cut it round so to follow the curve. Okay. Mm -hmm. But since this clay is still flexible, so I wouldn't worry about that much. Okay. big so I'm going to slide it smaller okay that looks good right and you can make a mark here Slip right out of the spot. Okay. Make sure it is straight. Okay. And make sure the size is good. Okay. Pressure, pressure. Um, if you want it. Get something there to get more pressure there, okay? further you can get a little uh, needle to a net smooth it out okay. so that is how I attach the handles we don't need to coil the handles you, it, it, you could you could you could roll a little coil there and then squeeze it in there, especially the inside corner mm -hmm. if you find out the inside if there is a gap there put the coil there to reinforce, reinforce it it's important to reinforce it, okay? Everywhere when you join them, especially the corner, you don't want the corner to be too sharp. So that's why we patch with the coil to reinforce that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is our project for the outer dish. And the corner here, now you see that this part here is firmer and it's very easy to take care of it by using the paper towel to smooth it, right? See that? That's the same method as we are doing the sushi plate and now it's firm enough for you to take care of it. So do it at the right time is very important, especially when you do the slab work. Be patient. Don't you want to do it too dry or too wet. The right timing is the most important part for hand build. Okay? All right. So that's you. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope mine looks good. I'm getting